There's just something about having your own personal ship and sailing the waters in Assassin's Creed that is pretty satisfying. There are I believe 5 main ships that we get to control through the entirety of their respective games. Those ships are the Aquila, the Jacto, the Morrigan, the Experto Crede and also the Adrestia. So what I want to do in this video is talk about each ship and go over my personal top 5 rankings of each of these iconic ships. Oh and shout out to this user for suggesting this video idea. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. Okay so let's start off at 5th place. And before I actually get into this specific ship, just know that none of these ships are bad. In fact this is a top 5 that honestly could change tomorrow, the day after or even next year for all I know. Anyway at 5th spot I've gone with the Experto Crede. Now if you're not aware as to whose ship this is and what game this ship was a part of, well this is a brig and also a former slave ship that was captained by none other than Adewale himself. Now the main and most important reason I placed this ship at 5th spot is because it's pretty much the jackdaw but reskinned. It's not the most powerful ship out of 5 but it's also not the most impressive. The Experto Crede is a ship that does not exactly have many upgrading capabilities. Of course this is probably due to Freedom Cry just being a DLC and not a fully fledged mainline game. So it's to be expected that the Experto Crede is just a reskin jackdaw with slightly less capabilities. We do also witness the battle between the Morrigan and the Experto Crede during Assassin's Creed Rogue and I remember taking down that ship very easily so it didn't really put up much of a fight. In the end, it was eventually beached in the settlement of Vielle Carrier and I believe that was the last we heard of the Experto Crede ship. In terms of its capabilities, the Experto Crede consists of 46 broadside cannons, 4 chaser cannons, 2 swivel guns and also 2 mortars which contribute to its firepower. However, sadly it's not enough for me to place it any higher in this video. So 5th place is where the Experto Crede is. Ok so moving on to 4th place, now I've gone with the Aquila from Assassin's Creed 3 as the next ship in this list. The Aquila is of course the primary vessel for the naval expeditions and many sea battles. Like seriously, the Aquila went through a lot of battles and was involved in many wars. There's the Battle of Gloucester, the Frederica Naval Battle, the Battle of Chesapeake and it was even involved during the rebellion against King Washington. The Aquila was built by the Parisian Brotherhood in 1749 and honestly this ship was quite special. You see despite its smaller size when compared to the other ships in this video, it definitely had more firepower than expected and was faster than most shooters. Under the command of the assassin sailor Robert Faulkner, he gained a reputation as the Ghost of the North Seas, which let's be honest is a pretty cool nickname to have. This was due to its knack of surprising attacks from the fog before suddenly disappearing again. Of course as I said earlier, the smaller size definitely helps with this. During Assassin's Creed 3, I'll be honest, it's not exactly the most manoeuvrable compared to other ships in this video and the upgrades that the ship had to offer were not that substantial. In terms of firepower and what the Aquila had to offer, it consisted of a whopping 60 broadside cannons which if you think about is pretty nuts considering its small size. There's also 6 swivel guns and a naval ram. However in terms of history and what happened to the Aquila, well that's pretty unknown. We do know that the ship was captured by quite a few people, of course Connor included. But as to where the ship currently is and how it met its end, well sadly nobody knows. I guess it's up to us to create theories. So yeah, fourth place is where I placed the Aquila from Assassin's Creed 3. Now in third place, this could be kind of surprising to a lot of people and that is the Adrestia ship from Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Now for those wondering what the Adrestia ship is, well it's a ship in the 5th century BCE that was captained by Cassandra and given to her by Barnabas. It's a pretty lengthy ship that clocks in at 37 meters in length which I believe is one of the more bigger ships in this video. Of course we get the ship once we rescue Barnabas from the Cyclops near the start of the game and throughout Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the Adrestia is our trusty vessel alongside Barnabas himself as a kind of quarter master. Even though Barnabas is not exactly related to the actual ship in terms of its design and capabilities, just simply having Barnabas as your right hand man on the Adrestia is one of the reasons I placed it higher over the likes of the Experto Crede and the Aquila. It makes those ship journeys across the massive Greek sea so enjoyable. The Adrestia is a ship that is more on the flexible and unique side when it comes to its upgrade capabilities. First off, it's capable of having arrows, javelins, fire braziers and even Chimera's breath which if you don't know is like a flamethrower kind of weapon for the ship which just sounds amazing to have as a weapon. Upgrading the ship is very impressive, you can have the likes of more fire segments, more arrow volleys, javelin volleys, legendary hulls and even upgrade the armour of your actual crew which I found to be quite entertaining. The Adrestia has a pretty formidable reputation in 
terms of its legacy. It defeated many ships like the Amber Dawn, the Kronos, Skylar, Eos and so many more during its time sailing the ocean. And on top of that, just being able to customise your crew was something that made the address here all the more enjoyable in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. There was so much customization for this ship, which is something that I love about the address here. However, there are of course some drawbacks. The sailing in Assassin's Creed Odyssey is not exactly my favourite and naval battles seem rather easy. But that's of course due to it being a very large scale RPG game and naval combat is not the main focus when compared to the likes of, you know, the Jackdaw in Black Flag or the Morrigan in Rogue. The aftermath of the Adrestia is kind of known, but not that much. We do know that Cassandra kept using the Adrestia after she left Greece and explored the world to find Isu vaults and artifacts until it eventually ended. Okay, now for the runner up in this video as to what the best ship is in Assassin's Creed, well, that would belong to the Morrigan. Now, surprisingly, this was not an easy decision to make. There were a lot of factors that made me lean towards placing the Morrigan as my number one, but also a lot of factors that made me reconsider that. But nonetheless, second is still a pretty good position. So, the Morrigan is, of course, a pretty beefy warship that was captained by the assassin turned Templar Shea Cormac during the Seven Years' War. Similar to the Aquila from Assassin's Creed 3, the Morrigan is a ship that was involved in quite a lot of battles. From the Siege of Louisbourg to the Battle of Labrador and also the Battle of Kibaron Bay. The Morrigan was a ship that was of course created for navigating narrower waters, which gives it a massive advantage over the other ships in this video in terms of manoeuvrability. Now despite being slightly smaller than the Jackdaw, the Morrigan has some pretty exceptional power. I honestly love the fact that it's a ship that was specifically designed for colder harsher environments and it features an iced ram and a front ram that can seriously fuck up other ships in the waters. Assassin's Creed Rogue is a game that, if you've noticed, the naval side of it makes navigating the Morrigan very buttery smooth. And since it's a very easy to control ship, it definitely has its advantages over the likes of larger ships, making it a very underrated ship in battle. It's a ship that you definitely would not want to come across in the waters. The Morrigan's firepower is pretty remarkable. It consists of 34 broadside cannons, 4 puckle guns, 4 carronades, burning oil and also 2 mortars, making its weaponry quite efficient. One notable ship that the Morrigan took down that I can remember off the top of my head is the Storm Fortress, which if you don't know, is a very very strong ship. In fact it was one of the 7 legendary ships in the North Atlantic and the Storm Fortress was described as the most powerful ship in the Assassin fleet at that time, which is pretty impressive and the fact that the Morrigan is capable of taking down such a ship is pretty cool. Here's a fun fact, if the Morrigan was a real life ship, it would be classified as a 5th rate frigate by the standard classification of the Royal Navy. Ok now for the number one ship in Assassin's Creed, I think it's pretty evident as to what I've chosen and that is none other than the iconic and legendary Jackdaw, a ship that needs no explanation. So yeah, thanks for watching. Now, but in all seriousness, the Jackdaw was a brig that was captained by none other than Edward Kenway. He of course acquired the ship while held captive aboard a fleet set for Spain. It's also during this capture mission that he first encounters Adewale, and then following their escape, Edward takes ownership of one of the ships, naming it the Jackdaw. Standing at 48.5 meters high, 60 meters in length, and 11.9 meters in width, the Jackdaw was a menacing ship on the high seas, and is definitely one that was not to be messed with. Upgrading the Jackdaw did require some effort, but it wasn't too challenging, especially if you were pretty good at managing Kenway's fleet and finding the suitable ships to plunder. Black Flag's naval combat made plundering and fighting other ships in the ocean pretty fun, and in my opinion, it's probably the peak of naval side in Assassin's Creed. Its firepower is definitely the most impressive out of all the ships in this video. It consists of a whopping 46 broadside cannons, 4 chaser cannons, 2 swivel guns, 160 fire barrels, 40 volleys of heated shot and also 20 mortar rounds which all could be upgradable to make the firepower the ultimate powerhouse. You see, it's not just raw combat and power that makes the Jackdaw so impressive. Its ability to showcase versatility as well is pretty commendable. I remember there was one mission where the Jackdaw was able to disguise itself as a Portuguese ship to deceive the Spanish vessels making it very impressive in stealthy operations. The Jackdaw definitely has the most impressive resume in terms of which ship it conquered. I mean I'm talking all the HMS ships as well as formidable Templar ships like the El Arca del Maestro which of course was the ship that belonged to none other than the Templar Julian Ducasse. If we're talking legacy, the Jackdaw is definitely the ship with the most legacy. After Assassin's Creed Black Flag, not much is known about the Jackdaw's journeys with Edward Kenway. However, before 1735, the ship returned to the West Indies and 
and sank near Hispaniola. You see, before the jackdaw actually sank, Edward removed its original wheel and he kept it in his London mansion's hidden basement, using it for a secret exit mechanism. We of course can see this whilst playing Assassin's Creed Syndicate. The details of the jackdaw's sinking remain unknown, but Adewale explored the wreckage in the Freedom Cry DLC, and examining the underwater remains in Freedom Cry reveals the ship's figurehead in a trench, suggesting that it may have been sunk by a powerful opponent. Decay over the years might have weakened its structure, making it more susceptible in battle. Regardless, it's pretty clear that the jackdaw made its end facing some pretty strong ships that outmatched its capabilities. But then again, considering how many battles the jackdaw won, it's safe to say it's endured so much and it was bound to eventually get destroyed. But nonetheless, it's still my favourite ship and also the most iconic in the series. So there you have it, that is my personal top 5 best ships in the entire series. Yes, there are a few other ships that I maybe could have included, but those were one-off moments like Aya's ship in Origins, or even random ship missions in other Assassin's Creed games. The ones in this video are the ones we all know and love. Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and with that said, I'll see you in the next one.